I am Dr. Howard Kaufman. I'm a professor of surgery and medicine at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the uh, new uh, happenings within uh, the treatment of Merkel cell carcinoma. Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare but aggressive form of skin cancer. It's important that physicians be aware of this uh, tumor because when caught early, it can be quite treatable, but if it's caught late, the disease can metastasize and is associated with uh, mortality uh, once metastasis has occurred. The origin of Merkel cell carcinoma remains controversial. The cells appear to have a neuroendocrine type function, and so Merkel cell was originally called neuroendocrine tumor of the skin. Today, it's given a distinct designation of Merkel cell carcinoma, and although the incidence is low at about 2,000 cases per year in the United States, the incidence of the disease has been slowly increasing over the last several decades. Merkel cell carcinoma has a number of risk factors. This includes the presence of immunosuppression. It tends to occur in the elderly uh, patients, and it also is associated with ultraviolet radiation. So the lesions will often appear in areas of sun exposure, such as around the face and the neck and the, the uh, upper extremities. <clears throat> In general, the clinical pre presentation of Merkel cell is an asymptomatic but rapidly expanding lesion. Merkel cell can be confused with other forms of uh, skin lesions um, and is often treated by the same physicians who treat melanoma. So there are thought to be some similarities, but there are also some unique differences with Merkel cell carcinoma. In general, uh, melanomas will tend to uh, present with very small lesions which can ulcerate or bleed or have pruritus, whereas the typical Merkel cell lesion will often be completely asymptomatic. It can be flesh colored, it can be reddish, it can be bluish in color, but almost uniformly it has the uh, feature of rapidly expanding. A biopsy is indicated to make the diagnosis, and once Merkel cell is diagnosed, diagnosed it is important to institute treatment uh, quite, quite rapidly. Now, the major uh, form of treatment for Merkel cell carcinoma in the early stages is surgical resection. And this involves completely removing the lesion. If it's in the skin or soft tissues, that means removing it with clear margins. And most patients should undergo a sentinel lymph node biopsy to rule out metastatic spread to regional lymph nodes. In the case that a sentinel lymph node is positive for carcinoma, most experts recommend a completion lymph node dissection of the regional nodal basin involved. It's also important as part of standard of care to use adjuvant radiation at sites of tumor growth. So in the case of an isolated skin or soft tissue lesion, this would be external radiation to the site of the tumor growth. And in the case where lymph node disease is involved, radiation to the lymph node basin is also indicated. Now, patients who are found to have early stage Merkel cell carcinomas are at high risk for recurrence, and so routine follow-up is generally indicated. At our center, we typically will do whole body imaging with the CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and an MRI of the brain every three months for two years, and then every six months for an additional three years to follow the patients for a full five-year uh, course of uh, follow-up after diagnosis. In the event that metastatic disease is found, again, it's very important to get these patients into treatment early as the doubling time of Merkel cell carcinomas can be quite rapid. Now, historically, the only available treatment for metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma was chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy regimen that was used most frequently was one that contained a platinum-based regimen, either cisplatin or carboplatin, along with the toposide. Topotecan is also used in refractory cases or in patients who aren't able to tolerate a platinum-based therapy, although responses to this are a little bit lower. Now, in single institution studies, the response rates to cytotoxic chemotherapy were generally around 50%. The problem is that in long-term follow-up, responses usually last around five or six months, and almost all patients eventually recur and will die of their metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma. Interestingly, the FDA has actually not approved any of the chemotherapy regimens because these have not been tested in prospective randomized studies. Thus, a major unmet medical need was to develop new therapies for Merkel cell carcinoma. 
And early on, there were some indications that Merkel cell might be responsive to immune recognition. And this was based on a number of important observations. The first one was that approximately 80% of Merkel cell carcinomas appear to be associated with a virus. And this is a unique virus, which has been termed the Merkel cell polyoma virus. As mentioned, it's found in about 80% of cancers, and there's some debate with some experts thinking that it's really involved in all Merkel cell carcinomas, but in some patients, those 20% where the virus can't be detected, these patients may have developed an immune response against the virus and been able to clear it. The natural history of this virus is not fully uh, known, and so the implications for this are, are a little bit unclear, but suggest that perhaps the immune system is able to respond to Merkel cell uh, cancers. The second line of evidence is that a particular protein, which has been called programmed cell death ligand 1 or PDL1, was found to be at high levels in almost all Merkel cell carcinoma tumor microenvironments. And PDL1 is an important molecule because it can bind to PD1 on infiltrating T cells and kill them. Thus, PDL1 represents a negative prognostic marker but has also turned out to be a very important uh, positive predictive marker for response to immunotherapy targeting PD-1 or PD-L1. This has probably been most clearly described in patients with non-small cell lung cancer, where PD-L1 expression is associated with good response to agents that block the PD-1, PD-L1 interaction. And so a series of studies were conducted in Merkel cell carcinoma patients using antibodies to both PD-1 and PD-L1 to look at responses. In an early study that was conducted by the Cancer Immunotherapy Trials Network, pembrolizumab, which is an antibody that blocks PD-1, was reported in 25 patients with metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma who had not been treated with chemotherapy. In this study, surprisingly, almost 56% of patients actually had regression of their tumor, suggesting that there was good activity uh, with this agent. A second agent that targeted PD-L1, a drug called Avelumab, was also studied in the largest Merkel cell carcinoma study ever conducted in which 125 patients were screened and ultimately 88 patients were treated with the drug. In this study, patients had to have tried and failed chemotherapy, representing a little bit of a more difficult study population to treat. In this trial, early reports suggested a 32% response rate with an approximately 42% disease control rate. In further follow-up, an additional two patients went into complete response for an ultimate response rate of 33%, with most patients maintaining durable responses including several complete responders. Based on this information and an early study in which Avelumab was tested in patients who had not had previous chemotherapy and fairly high response rates in the range of around 62% were initially reported, the FDA approved Avelumab for the treatment of both first-line and second-line metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma. Avelumab is a monoclonal antibody it is given through an intravenous infusion uh, that occurs over about 60 minutes and is given every two weeks. This is done in the ambulatory clinic and there is a uh, small but definite rate of infusion reactions that have occurred and so it's generally recommended that for the first four infusions that patients should get pre-medicated usually with a Tylenol and a Benadryl composition. Uh, typically steroids are not needed in this pre-medication regimen. If a patient does develop signs of an infusion reaction, the infusion should be stopped and the patient's given additional uh, supportive care. And if it's a mild reaction, the infusion can be restarted at a slower rate or can be put off and the patients can be more fully pre-medicated at the next session. Additional side effects that have been reported with the Velumab have included immune-mediated adverse reactions that have been seen with other T-cell checkpoint inhibitors. So this is when we think that the immune response can actually target end organ tissues. And almost every tissue in the body has been the target of these immune-mediated side effects. Uh, common ones include the skin where dermatitis can happen, the colon where colitis, where patients will present with diarrhea, sometimes with blood in the stools and crampy abdominal pain, or a pneumonitis that can present with a cough or shortness of breath. 
Interestingly, these side effects have been less common in the Merkel cell population, possibly because it's a more uh, elderly population in these studies, or perhaps there's something different about Merkel cell carcinoma compared to other solid uh, tumors. Nonetheless, uh, clinicians should be aware that these can occur. The treatment of these side effects is early institution of corticosteroids. And if this is done early, the steroids can be tapered. And once tapered and the side effect goes to grade one or less, a velumab can be safely uh, reinstituted. Now, based on these studies, there is a great deal of excitement in the field about using immunotherapy for Merkel cell carcinoma. And a number of other studies are going on, particularly focused on combinations of, of therapies. So there are studies looking at uh, nivolumab and ipilimumab, which is a combination that has achieved regulatory approval for patients with metastatic melanoma. And that combination is going on with or without radiation therapy. And I would anticipate that other combination studies will be high priorities in the field, given the interesting results that we've seen already uh, with uh, pd one blockade in this disease. What we've learned so far is, is that immunotherapy is an appropriate treatment for patients with metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma. Avelumab is the first drug to achieve FDA approval for the treatment of this disease. Avelumab is a PDL1 agent that seems to work by improving immune responses against the, uh, the Merkel cell cancers. Um, treatment should continue as long as patients have signs of disease and are not having evidence of significant toxicities. It's important for physicians to remember that infusion-related reactions and fatigue were the most common side effects, whereas immune-mediated events can occur, and these should be managed with early institution of corticosteroids uh, with the goal of rapid uh, tapering of the steroids to get patients back onto treatment. Patients should probably be followed with imaging uh, after treatment to determine responses and to define when to stop uh, further therapy. At, the, at this time, looking back at some of the studies, we have not been able to identify biomarkers to better select patients. Patients who were positive for the Merkel cell polyoma virus uh, were as likely to respond as patients who were negative. Likewise, uh, there's been a lot of attention looking at the levels of pdl one expression, and this has not been correlated with outcome in this disease as it has in patients with lung cancer. So for now, all patients who present with metastatic Merkel cell carcinoma should be considered for treatment with immunotherapy. I hope that what I've shared with you today uh, will help you in your clinical practice and really represents a significant advance for patients dealing with advanced Merkel cell carcinoma. Thank you for your attention.